It seems like only yesterday, when life was normal and people were free to go out and socialize, travel freely, or conduct their business, and now we're being told that the beaches are unsafe and are off limits, and even coming to my favorite park alone is considered a danger to the community and will be forbidden. While there are many opinions about how effective this lockdown is, and for how long our current situation will last, which I won't directly name because of censorship issues, it seems clear that in some regards, things are getting worse, and there are now disruptions in the supply chain, meaning there may be food shortages in the near future. One area that is undergoing dramatic change is in the dairy industry, where farmers are dumping thousands of gallons of milk a day. Dumping milk is pretty much what it sounds like. Disposing of milk by pouring it down a drain rather than delivering it to processors to turn into dairy products for distribution. So in three generations we've never had to do this before. Tipping away the whole tank of milk because it won't be collected today. Processors are not picking up the milk due to a drop in demand from the food services sector leaving farmers to pour it away. It's the same in the US with this dairy farmer forced to empty out its milk supplies due to the closure of restaurants and schools in lockdown. There's concern that some dairy farms may go out of business, which could result in a milk shortage when demand returns post pandemic. As much of American life has come to a halt, the American dairy cow has not. But with demand dwindling, dairy farmers have been led to dump their milk. It's such a waste and it's such a, a, a trauma for the dairy farmer that has worked so hard. Ohio farmer Dan Bassey fears the financial losses will be too much for many fellow farmers to sustain. We fear that we'll be losing more dairy farmers without nearby assistance in the coming year. Restaurants, ice cream shops, and schools have closed. 30% of the national supply of dairy products goes to food service. That is dairy farmer Steve Maddox. He has 3,000 dairy cows in Riverdale, California. We first met Maddox in 2018. You've got to harvest every day and you got to do something with it. Farmers like him had already faced drops in dairy prices by roughly 40% over the last several years because of overproduction and an increase in milk alternatives. But now, a crash in the market in just the last week. The fear of the unknown has crashed the price uh, by almost a third of where it was at. And so that's a little uh, distressful. Sisters Sydney Brooks and Zoe Nelson are sixth generation family dairy farmers and sell 100% of their milk to a local Wisconsin cheese company. You can't shut down cows, you can't turn them off like a faucet. But now, with a drop in the demand for cheese... To see it literally going down the drain is it's devastating. Uncertainty at a time in which the future of the American dairy industry already faces serious questions. So they're looking at substantial losses today, which is why the dairy farmer, after years of struggles, is so upside down in terms of his balance sheet. Farmers going into debt, many into bankruptcy. Last year alone, nearly 1,000 dairy farmers halted production. For the 42,000 dairy farms that remain, it's about making it to the summer. Amid the current situation, some North American farmers were recently forced to dump their milk as processing plants were full. Farmers estimate as many as 5 million liters will be dumped weekly in Canada. In a statement, the dairy farmers of Ontario say they are doing their best to respond to the unpredictable market fluctuations. 
At Providence Dairy in the US, farmers got rid of four tanker loads of milk harvested from 1,200 cows. Nikki Boxler said her family had no other choice but to throw away their milk this past weekend. The closure of restaurants, schools, and food service businesses had a direct impact on their milk sales, Boxster said. The situation we're in has disrupted the milk supply chain and the distribution of the products. The dairy industry is particularly vulnerable as its production is highly perishable and can't be frozen. Some dairy groups want the U.S. Department of Agriculture to purchase their production and distribute it to food pantries. Some farmers in Ontario have been told, Scott, and I don't get this, to dump what they are producing. Totally counterintuitive in this, in this environment of going to the grocery store and wondering whether what you want is going to be on the shelf. But take a look at this because this is what uh, Ontario dairy farmers are being asked to do. About 500 farms in Ontario itself are being asked to dump about 5 million litres of raw uh, milk uh, per week and this comes from the Dairy Farmers of Ontario Association. Now this is a supply side issue and there's uh, less supply, more demand. Now here's a statement as well from the association saying how unusual this is. Cheryl Smith, their CEO, saying that in the 55 year history, Dairy Farmers of Ontario had only once before had to ask producers to dispose of raw milk and what this does is it lessens the supply, it's supposed to increase the, the, the price of the product here and it's it's basically a co-op, uh, a, co a supply side management. So they're being told to do this to maintain the supply and also the pricing. But it also runs counter to a what a lot of people are, are worried about. And that is making sure there's enough supplies on the shelves. And it also runs counter to what the uh, Ontario Dairy Council is saying. And they're saying demand for milk is up 40%. So a little bit of a mixed message from Ontario farmers right at a time when a lot of Canadians are worried about what's on their shelves and if they're mm -hmm. going to be, you know, what's there, what they want want to buy. They're limiting those milk purchases for two per customer here at the Target behind me. And that's difficult to imagine when dairy farmers across the state are dumping all of their milk because of a milk surplus. The video shocking for many to watch. Thousands of gallons of milk at the Golden E Dairy Farm in West Bend being dumped down the drain. It's delicious, nutritious milk. This would have been on a store shelf 24 hours from now, um, but it's not. They, along with other Wisconsin dairy farmers, have been asked to dump their milk every day for the next week. As stores continue limiting milk purchases to per customer, it's difficult to imagine a milk surplus. In Wisconsin, about 90% of the milk that's produced on farms ends up on a truck and moves to a cheese plant. They have seen, with the closure of, of hundreds of thousands of restaurants and schools and universities and destinations, that food service market where we feed people through those channels is, is been put on pause around the country. And because raw milk needs to be processed and bottled, they can't simply bring it to a food bank. Officials say that cheese processing and storage facilities are nearly full and farmers have nowhere to take their milk. The Wisconsin Department of Agriculture and dairy leaders are asking the federal government to step in. They need to come up with an opportunity to purchase cheese the way it's being made and get that redistributed, as you indicated, to shelters, um, food banks, etc. Some store shelves empty of milk, yet we've seen video of farmers dumping it. We set out to find out why. With Wisconsin already bleeding dairy farms, bad just became worse. Facebook photos of Wisconsin milk being dumped in manure pits or flushed down the drain. But how could it be when some dairy cases in the Twin Cities are empty? Nobody wants to dump milk. Marty Halleck milks cows near Mondovi, Wisconsin, and serves on the board of the Ellsworth Cooperative Creamery. Probably the biggest challenge is, is how rapidly this change came. Almost instantly, demand shifted from cheese, primarily sold in now shuttered restaurants, to bottled milk being guzzled in stay-at-home households. A Wisconsin dairy disaster. In the state of Wisconsin, about 90% of the milk is made into cheese, 10% is fluid. Cheese plants, like Ellsworth, aren't set up to bottle milk. And bottling plants, like this one run by Kemp's in Minneapolis, only have capacity to bottle so much. Somewhere there's a line that made them little butter patties that's sitting empty right now. Because they went to restaurants. 
They went to restaurants. Ellsworth Creamery, the Minnesota State Fair supplier of curds, is working overtime turning milk into stored cheese. Still, it sent out this letter urging its farmers to cut production through cow sales and feeding changes and offering financial incentives to dairymen who quit. All meant to stave off milk dumping. It's heartbreaking. It, uh, it really causes mental stress on a group of people that already had a lot of mental stress. In a letter, Wisconsin's congressional delegation urged the Secretary of Agriculture to step up government purchase of cheese for food shelves. Quit dragging your feet. Here at Golden E Dairy Farm, they are dumping 25 to 30,000 gallons of precious milk per day, and they don't know when it'll stop. Nothing is going to change other than the fact there is no milk leaving this farm. Ryan's milk cooperative told him to dump all of his milk for the next week. That's tens of thousands of dollars a day going to waste. But he's told dumping the milk is for the betterment of the industry. The trigger here is to get the markets moving again, and that will take as long as it takes to get restaurants reopened, schools reopened, and to find some uh, normalcy back in the market. John Umheifer with the Cheesemakers Association says there's an oversupply of milk in the market. So he says there's plenty of milk out there for people. So giving it away for free would be detrimental to the industry. Of course, the situation is not restricted to the United States and Canada, as schools, restaurants, and businesses have been closed down worldwide, causing disruptions in the supply and demand of milk all over the world, including Europe, where dairy farmers have come together, inviting the media to film them dumping their milk, hoping that the dramatic display will help make the point for how dire things have become. You have to understand that what we're doing today is no fun for us. Opening the tanks is like cutting our veins. It is the fruit of our work. And reaching this point means that we have nothing to lose anymore. We no longer have the choice. We've been forced into it by politicians and union leaders. They should be ashamed. It's a catastrophe having to throw away our milk to be heard. We can see that the media have come because we've all gathered in one place, and they can understand that it's not just 6 or 7% of us, but 50% of producers who are on strike today. That said, Europeans are used to striking and protesting to force their politicians to listen, and some have decided that rather than dump their milk into the fields, they instead are spraying and hosing down the offices and buildings of the politicians themselves. Our message is that we need new market regulations to ensure prices cover production costs. Milk prices are far too low. Farmers can't make a living and have to give up their businesses. While some people feel that hosing down buildings and milk is going too far, other protesters say this is just the start and plan on dumping several tons of manure on their politician's doorstep. While I discourage this behavior and ponder the effectiveness of such tactics, I can understand the frustration and like many others hope that the governments can provide a solution to the crisis. Back in America, some dairy farmers in Pennsylvania have decided that rather than waiting on politicians to save the day, they'll take matters into their own hands rather than crying over spilt milk. The Woe Nelly Dairy Farm has been in the Brown family since the 1700s. Located along Bear Rocks Road, just beyond Westmoreland County border in Bullskin Township, Pennsylvania, the Woe Nelly Dairy Farm has 200 cows and Ben and Mary Beth Brown were working up to 24-hour shifts pasteurizing and bottling their own milk in their barn. They were dealt a serious blow, like many other dairy farms, when their longtime buyer, Schneider Dairy, in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, 
said that they did not have the usual market to sell the milk produced on the Browns' 500-acre dairy farm. Ben Brown admitted his family is barely able to scrape by, and the thought of going under has put him on edge. That's when he posted a notice on social media that, although they only have the equipment to pasteurize 30 gallons at a time, they plan to pasteurize milk around the clock, adding store hours to sell the milk directly at the farm itself. Brown said, quote, I hate waste, and I don't want to dump the milk. People can use it, and I still have to pay my bills. The Brown's message on the Wonelli Dairy Facebook page was spread by fans throughout Fayette and Westmoreland counties. At noon the next day, cars and pickup trucks were lined 10 deep on both sides of rural Bear Rocks Road. The community responded, and this, my friends, is what America is all about. The line to get in the store was at least 20 customers deep. The customers were maintaining their social distance, staying at least six feet apart, waiting to buy milk and other dairy products. Brown, who was still reeling from a 24-hour shift of pasteurizing and bottling milk, said he was not sure how many gallons he made to sell, but was grateful that the community responded like it did and was thankful that so many were willing to wait in line just to help him out. They asked us to dump this week because they said they can't buy it. They don't have anywhere to sell it. And like, like I said, I don't understand why they were holding people back from buying in the stores. And they should just let them buy it instead of wasting it, asking farmers to dump it. And uh, so. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you need to sell the milk uh, in order to keep uh, the farm in business. Uh, how yeah. long has the farm been in your family? It's been in the family since the 1700s, and uh, I want to keep it that way, keep it in the family. <laughs> so uh, that's why we bottle our own milk, and that's why we sell milk to different uh, Snyder's dairies to keep the place going. So. And uh, I heard you were up late last night uh, pasteurizing. Yeah, I, uh, I start mornings now around midnight, a little uh, so right around midnight, and keep going, and uh, all night long, all day long, basically. So I try to keep it going because I don't want to waste any. So. And uh, what's uh, what are the hours of the uh, market? You farm market. Our store. Um, it's uh, it's Tuesday and Wednesday from noon to 6, and then Friday and Saturday from uh, 10 to 5, so. Well, we want to help out the family. I'm friends with their uh, their uncle, Larry, and um, we just don't want to see them to have a problem and have to dump all their milk. And how did you uh, hear about it? Uh, from Larry Basinger. Uh -huh. That would be the farm owner's uncle. Uncle, mm -hmm. uh-huh. And uh, are you surprised at the amount of people here today with the cars lined up? I am shocked, yes. I'm very shocked um, and very happy to see this many people supporting them um, because um, Mary Beth has been very sick and, um, you know, they're struggling to keep everything going as it is. And we just want to support them in any way we can. And how much milk do you anticipate buying? I think I'm going to pick up around 10 gallons. Oh, today. wow. That's a lot of milk. Well, I'm getting for my granddaughters and uh, getting for my daughter and for myself. If you live in Pennsylvania and would like to show some local support, you can find the Wonelli Dairy Hours of Operation and address on their Facebook page or maybe just give them some words of encouragement, as it's great to not only see hardworking Americans taking the bull by the horn, so to speak, and getting through a crisis with hard work and dedication, but also to know that the community was so responsive and generous, not only purchasing directly so the Browns could stay afloat, but also helping to distribute excess milk to needy people at shelters, some with young homeless children, who were very grateful for the milk rather than having it wasted by being dumped into the ground. That's what America is really all about. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. My published work is available on Amazon. My books make a great gift. If you'd like to support what I do, you can do that through patreon.com. There should be a link below in the description section for those who are interested. I appreciate it. Thank you. Please hit the like button and subscribe for future updates. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. Please have a wonderful week, and I hope to see you again soon. <laughs>